And if you open up a terminal, control T. Right, there's one on the desktop you can. So, um, what we need to do before we can basically just write a program without the IDE is we need to install the C development environment. So essentially all of the helper files that allow us to talk to this board uh, within the C programming language. So Link Sprite, which is the company that's providing these boards, and has a couple of representatives in the back here, we should thank them for, uh, for providing us with all these boards, um, have actually provided a development environment for C. It's on their GitHub site. So we're just going to make a quick clone of it, and then we can compile and use that code. Before we do that, you're going to need to install git. Not all of these machines, these don't have git on them. So the command is sudo apt-get install. I can probably make this a little bigger. Let me see if I can make this a little Wow, this terminal does not have larger font. All right, sudo apt-get install, and then git, g-i-t. So if you run this command, Mine's already installed, so it's not going to do anything. But for the rest of you, this should start installing Git. If you're not connected to the internet, you might run into an issue right here. Uh, but hopefully this just takes long. Yours is not installed, but you should decide which one of you is going to install it. Um, okay. So that's going to take a second to install. Once that's installed, you can actually, we're going to do we're going to do what's called, uh, so Git's a version control system. It essentially allows, it's a way to kind of keep track of changes to your code. We're not really going to be using Git for real, but we are going to use Git to grab a copy of the code we want to use. So don't worry if you're not a Git expert or if you have no idea what Git is. It's going to be two Git commands. We're going to be done. That said, Git is totally something worth teaching yourself at some point in your life. It makes your life very much easier in a wide variety of ways. Um, so when we have git installed, and I'm sure some of you are still installing, so we'll give it a minute. But the next thing we need to do is what's called a git clone, and we're going to give it the name of the repository on GitHub. So GitHub, if you're not familiar, is just a website where people can upload their code, and it tracks all their code, and you can go there and find copies of different types of code. So we're going to clone a set of code on GitHub. Uh, and what we want to clone is the code we need to do this at the So I, if you open up a web browser, you can actually, we can, and if you go to the website for this course, you can copy uh, the web address of Vulcan Clone. And if you go to the first course here, so there's two Git repos here. So we actually want this first one. Uh, so the command, once you have Git installed, you're going to do Git Clone. So to paste into a terminal, you can just go to edit and paste. So you want to do git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash pc duino slash c environment dot git. So gets installed, type in this command, run it. What that's going to do, mine's going to fail because I've already done it. But what it'll do is it's basically going to clone all of this code into a folder called c environment just inside your working directory there. Where are you with I totally lose everyone. Yes. <laughs> Raise your hand if you need a hand with this. If you need me to make it bigger. I don't actually have to do that. Uh, all right. So hopefully everyone has now has this folder called C environment. So if you CD into that folder, so CD C environment. I'm sorry my text isn't bigger. I don't know how to blow it up. Um, the first thing we need to do, so there's a lot of source code in here, so we need to build it so we can use it. Fortunately, there's what's called a make file. This is just a make is a program that knows how to build your code for you, and a make file kind of is like a recipe that describes how to build the code. So the first thing we need to do is, once we go into the C environment folder, so CD into C environment, and then just run make. So mine's going to be really fast because I did this earlier. But if you run make, it'll start going through a whole bunch of commands. Eventually, it'll get to the end. It may take a minute or two on your machine. So go ahead and run make. Let that start building all of the C code. So once it's, what that essentially did was built the libraries, the Arduino libraries that we're going to need. So if you do an LS, you will see there is this folder called sample. If you see the end of that sample folder, and do another LS, you will see these are essentially the same examples we were looking at earlier. Guys, so we have all the linker examples in here, same thing as before. 
This is the same test, this linker LED test dot C is essentially the same thing we just did in the IDE. We're going to do it again here. So when you go into the sample folder, so you see the in the sample, you're going to need to run make one more time. So this folder has its own make file, which is basically telling it how to build all of these little programs, including the one we care about. So go into this folder, run make again, and it'll start cranking through. If you run make here, before you run it on the top level folder, you're going to get errors about it missing this libarduino.a. That's because that first make command had to make that libarduino.a file. But as long as you did the top level make and now you're doing the make in the sample folder, you should be good. So when this is done building, you probably won't get this little year build maybe incomplete thing. So when this is all done, you can find all of the programs it just built. They're actually not inside here. They're up one level. So if you go up, there is an output folder right next to the sample folder. So within the C environment folder, there's output. If you go into that output folder, ULS, you'll note that there's a test folder. And then go into that test folder. Sorry, it's kind of buried. We can change this if we update the make file. Inside that test folder, you'll see the build versions of all these programs. So if you now run the linker LED test again, so if you just do dot slash from within the test folder, and you do linker LED test, it's going to go ahead and say you need to tell it what pin number. Uh, so this is, because we're not using the IDE, it's going to actually interactively ask us for the pin number. So if I run it again, and if you still have your LED plugged into the same place, that's pin 1. So if I run it again and just give it one as an argument, it should now start running and my LED should be flashing again. LED test. LED, LED. What do you do to make it stop? Oh, so when you want it to stop, just take control C. It'll run until you give it a control C. And like I said, if you wanted to modify this, so you see it's not quite as sleek because the ID makes life a little bit easier because it's all in one place. You can modify this in the same way. You would just need to go back to where the source files were, open up a text editor. So there's gedit and or emacs or them or whatever you happen to like. But a text editor of your choice, you could start modifying the code. You just want to make again and then come back and run it again. Is anyone having trouble getting this to run? This is really Okay. Anyone? Try and make it like. So just to demo, you know, if I wanted to edit this, I would go back to the source code. So yeah, that's what I was saying. So I'm back in that sample folder. You know, the file I would need to edit is this linker LED test.c. Um, I'm an Emacs user. Uh, if you're not an Emacs user, don't use Emacs because you'll just get terribly confused. There's probably gedit on here. If I type in the name of that file, so linker LED test name. So if I did gedit linker LED test dot c, I think a thousand less than this. Can you see it installed? It was being slower. Okay, so LeafPad is this basic editor here. So if you don't, if you want to just do this. If you run leafpad and open the file, so here, you know, this is essentially the same file we were looking at before. I could make it be off for twice as long as it's on, so I could change this to 500. I'm just going to save it. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to close it. So now if I just run make again, it'll go ahead and build that with my change. So I can now go back to the other folder, run it again. You can see why the IDE makes your life a little bit easier, but sometimes you want to do things to get more complicated than what the IDE can support. And then, you know, you have a full C environment here, so anything you can do in C, you could do here. Um, any questions on kind of what was going on here, where the source file is, where the output file is? I can't change it.